Right, so seems that James wanted me to do quite a few re-reviews of Locomotives before I had my terrible camera, whereas now I have a more high definition camera. Um, one of them he asked me to do was the C-Class. Um, I really should get some of the models that you haven't seen before out of the way and done, but I might try and get all the reviews done today. So let's let's try that. Anyway, so I haven't got the box with me as I think it's in the loft, but if you'd like to see me take it out of the box and my initial reactions when I first got the locomotive, um, I'll leave an annotation somewhere on the video and I'll probably leave it throughout the whole video just so you can go watch it. Anyway, so before we... For God's sake, Facebook. Anyway, uh, we'll ignore that. Um, so before I get into the actual review, I'll tell you a bit about the class, which is a C-class. Um, the South Eastern and Chatham, I believe that's how you say it, railway, or the uh, SE and CR railway. Well, the R stands for railway, I've just said. Railway, railway. Anyway, um, the C-class is a class of 060 steam locomotive, so 060. So no uh, wheels at the front, six driving wheels and no wheels at the back. And I believe this was a very popular wheel arrangement for the time of this being made. Designed by Harry Wainwright and built between the 1900s, so the start of, yeah, the start of the 1900s, and 1908, they were designed for freight duties, although occasionally used for passenger trains. They operated over the lines of the railway in London and South East England until the early 1960s. One example was a rebuilt S-Class saddle tank. Now, I don't know what an S-Class looks like. But there is one of these in preservation, and you probably all know what it is. It's uh, the one at the Bluebell Railway, and it's in that lovely green livery. I don't know what the correct terminology for that livery is, but um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else really need known. Uh, 109 were produced in total, and only one survives. And that's a that's quite a downfall. Um, it weighed 43 tons uh, and it had two cylinders. No, nope, I don't think there's anything else really that you need to know about it. Uh, I don't know anything about 689, which is the number of this locomotive. So, yeah, sorry about that. Um, I normally try and research my locomotives as best as possible, but I can't really find anything about this one. Um, but anyway. There is a picture on the internet of it though in this livery, um, so I don't know what its number was when it came, uh, when it was part of Southern Railway, I don't know what its uh, number was when it was part of British Railways, so yeah, sorry about that. For all I know it could be the one that's in preservation, I don't know. But anyway, we'll get on to the model. Now this was um, the start of 2013's um, Backman Collectors Club models. Um, and I wanted to buy it as quickly as possible because I thought it was running out but it actually took about three or four months to sell out really so I didn't need to rush however the Backman Collectors Club 4F model in Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway livery like sold it in a day so yeah it's very difficult as it's one of those couplings where uh, you couple the, it's just a simple um, Draw bar, that's the one. Uh, a draw bar coupling uh, with a well where the DCC chip is in the tender, and you also have um, well holes for speakers there. So basically, I can't pull it apart and show you the inside. The most I can do is that, but I don't want to break the wires. So I'm actually very happy with this uh, locomotive. Uh, the livery it's in is very basic. It's a very basic livery. It's just grey. But this is what it was painted in for World War One, so um, it had to be kind of basic for the times. They couldn't spend hours painting it in beautiful liveries. So you can get the model still, not this one. Although I'm sure if you search around on eBay, you'd be able to find it. You can get this model 
um, in black southern livery, um, a, a BR black early crest and late crest livery, and also in the um, green livery. I don't know what the livery is called, sorry. Um, anyway, so you have little printed details on like this which is the South East and Chatham uh, well not Chatham, it would be Chat Chatham or Chatham I don't know, uh, railway and you have a works plate there on the wheel arch and you also have printed stuff on the buffer beam so number 689 Once again, another works plate on the wheel arch, and it's all—it's all actually. Let's come undone. The, it's all actually printed on really nice. It's really sharp. However, you can feel it's printed on as there is a bit of a, a difference in height, so you can feel the, from where it's been printed on. I think this is the same chassis or at least maybe the same motor that they might have used in the 3F and 4F there might be different number of spokes on the wheels but I think it might be the same motor and if they have used the same motor well good on them because it's a very good motor so looking at this again after I've had it a while you can see some of the flaws how nearly everything's just moulded on onto the body there and that bit there does look a bit cheap and a bit plasticky. However, you do have some separately fitted things. I believe that might be separately moulded or separately fitted. No, I believe it's separately fitted, and I think that might have something to do with the brakes. So if we go on this side, I believe that's an air brake. As they have one on some austerities and on the uh, terrier. But uh, once again, separately fitted items, you do have the handrail and the safety valve and the whistle on top. Very nice little whistle there. You got some more handrails there and there. There's one going across the top of the smoke box too. You have little lamp hooks on the front as well. Uh, and there's one on the roof there, uh, well, not roof, uh, top of the smoke box. And separately fitted. Um, I guess you could call them smoke box locks. And there's another thing that you notice with this model, and there's so many rivets everywhere. There is literally like a rivet everywhere, apart from on the boiler. There's very few rivets. Um, but I've been really, really tempted to put the discs on the front, um, as it's not very prototypical for when I'm running on my layout. For when I run on my layout, considering. I don't think they had it in the 1960s, although I do try and uh, say that it's on a rail tour that's been repainted in this livery. So you have a separately fitted pipe going across there, I don't really know what that does. But what you all want to see is the inside. And Backman have really gone all out on the cab of this. So you have that red bit at the bottom there. Sorry, I can't really zoom in on this. I've on the tender. Uh, so in there you have that red bit at the bottom. That is the um, what you'd use to open the smoke box doors. And then that another red lever, the one at the very centre. I believe that's the regulator. Then you have. Probably the blower, cylinder cocks, uh, the water gauges, seats. Um, I can't see the reverser actually. Um, don't know where it'd be on this. Either way, you got the gauges at the top, uh, which is probably uh, pressure. And, uh, I don't think they had speedos on engines as early as this, so um, might be pressure. Uh, I was going to say steam heat, but it's a freight engine, so they wouldn't need heating. I don't know what the other one would be for. Anyway, you have some tender detail as well. Um, a printed thing on the top there. Oh, it's just saying that the tender is... I think that's 
Is it? Sorry about this. Thirty-one hundred gallons. Oh no, thirty-three, oh, three thousand three hundred gallons on the tender. And then that handle there would be the handbrake, more than likely. Uh, now the model does come with um, uh, some accessories like uh, a shovel that you can put along the tender, um, you know that kind of thing, and it also comes with a three link chain that you have to put on the tender which I thought was a bit cheap, they could have just put it on the factory considering I believe they put the front one on, I don't think I had to glue that on so yeah it also came with an M coupling that you could put on the front I haven't put mine on I think I, put, I had it on for a little while but then I took it off again as I kept using the three link chain it's great fun um, but what I, I was going to say, and I think I forgot, was it did come with brake rod in, but I just haven't put it on, because I'm not very good at putting on stuff like brake rod in. So, uh, just uh, just now, I'll, if you want to know anything else about this model, um, then leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer it. Um, yeah. So now, we're going to run it. Yay! Just before we uh, run the engine, which as you can see, I have a very long uh, freight consist. Um, but nothing's really changed on the layout, as you can see. It's been the same for about a year now. I am going to eventually, uh, well, I'm planning on either this week or next week to, well, probably next week, because I've got quite a lot going on this week. Um, I'm going to try and do the road over there, which comes off the level crossing into the garage and a car park on the station um, and I need to buy some clay so I can do the inside of the shed here, here and that's it. I will eventually do the tunnel but that will probably be a little while before that so time to get on with the running. As I'm going to try and get as many of the reviews done today as possible I'll probably end up using this um, long consist of freight on all of them uh, as I have a class 20 to review uh, 4575 a uh, oh, the a 3 Flying Scotsman and the class 03, I don't know if I said the 03 but anyway uh, right Let's see if I can get this on oh also what I believe I forgot to mention but I don't think you really have to mention it with Backman is that the buffers are sprung on both front and back but they're plastic uh, whereas Hornby if they do sprung buffers they normally end up having it metal anyway just trying to show you how slow it can go so that's on DC it is quite slow there we go And as you'll see, it's very strong too, and it should be for a freight engine. Right, just fix the screw uh, three link, the front. Also, I'd just like to ask: Did they have um, vacuum pipes on engines as early as this? Uh, because even for a freight engine, it would. I guess it'd be kind of odd if it had a vacuum. Oh, I guess fitted freight. Um, <laughs> Uh, did they have them this early or has Backman just left it on um, as this was only a collector's club model so there wouldn't be very many, at, well I think there's 501 of these um, and all the rest was for the later editions such as the Southern and the BR ones just, just a quick question anyway picking up all the slack, being all the slack and off we go So as you can see it's my normal, whenever I do long freights it's always all of my um, freight that I normally end up putting on. And if you'd like to know, that back brake van is just a Hornby Thomas and Friends one that's been all painted up and the lamps added on. As you can see I've got my 47 running on a Pullman as well. So here comes the 
C class. As you can see, very strong. It's got a really nice smooth motor too. However, I have noticed that the pickups on it must not be fantastic as it does tend to stall on points. It doesn't stall on the one at the station which leads into the siding, so that one there doesn't seem to stall on that. However, it does stall on the Pico ones. Which is this one that it's coming up to now. Just noticed there was a bit of a jump in uh, power. Hmm. Anyway, it's a it's a minor thing on such a good motor. Anyway, so time to do my arty farty stuff. So, the Backman C-Class. Would I recommend it? Uh, yes, actually, I would. Um, it's got a great motor. It's definitely a good hauler. And if you've got a small or industrial layout, although probably not an industrial engine, it's a tender engine, and I don't think there were really any industrial tender engines, it can go around first radius, which is uh, one of only few tender engines I know of, apart from maybe the Thomas Rangers. <laughs> so definitely a good engine with a, a decent amount of detail. I mean, it is a very basic uh, looking locomotive, so they can't put mass amounts of detail on it. Um, but anyway, I'd still recommend it. And the next review I'll do is the Batman Class 03, as I've wanted to show you that for a, quite a while now. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next review. Goodbye.